Jim, it's time to get up. Jim, it's time to get up. Oh, what day is it? It's Sunday. You need to go to church. No, it's, sun it's Sunday. There is no church on Sunday. What are you talking about? I'm talking about the pandemic. I don't know anything about a pandemic. It's Sunday. You need to go to church. Okay, I will, but where's my mask? Mask? What are you talking about? This is not Halloween. It's March 8th, and it's time for church. March 8th? March 8th? So I dreamed all of this? What is this, the Bob Newhart show? Just go to church. But honey, how are we going to survive the pandemic? I don't know, but you are more likely to find the answer at church than in that bed sleeping. Please get up. It is Sunday. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I'm going to see you at church in just a few minutes. I'll head that way now. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table's set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. I will rise in the early morning. The community's waiting for me. With a spring in my step, I'm walking with my friends and my family. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table's set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. God invites all the poor and the hungry to the banquet of justice and good, where the harvest will not be hoarded so that no one will lack for food. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table's set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. May we build such a place among us where all people are equal in love. God has called us to work together and to share everything we have. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table's set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. Let us go now to the banquet, to the feast of the universe. The table's set and a place is waiting. Come everyone with your gifts to share. Good morning. It is not March 8th. It is in fact August 30th and it is week 25 of our pandemic online worship. And though we would rather be together here in this sanctuary, it is safer now for us to stay apart. It is good that we are here. It's good we have the opportunity to worship together. I thank you for joining us as we worship in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Gathered in this place and across the country, we give you our thanks and praise, O Lord, be with us and inspire us that we may survive and thrive in these pandemic days. We pray in the strong name of Jesus. Amen. Cam Castle is going to read for us this morning, and we will be coming back to this text in just a few minutes. So I'd encourage you to listen very carefully. Cam, where are you this morning? Hey, Pastor Jim. I'm home. Where else am I going to be? Where I've been for, we've all been for months, but beautiful Whidbey Island. Here we are on our property and uh, check out the flowers. All right. The reading is from Romans 12, 9, 16. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. 
Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those that weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. The word of the Lord. Thank you, Cam. Our best to Laura and to the boys. Carl is going to sing for us now a song written by a man who did very little talking as he graced the silver screen in silent movies. Carl? Smile, though your heart is aching. Smile, even though it's breaking. Though there are clouds in the sky, you'll get by. If you smile through your fears and sorrow, smile and maybe tomorrow, you'll see the sun come shining through for you. Light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness, Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worth a while if you'll just smile. Light up your face with gladness, hide every trace of sadness. Although a tear may be ever so near, that's the time you must keep on trying. Smile, what's the use of crying? You'll find that life is still worthwhile if you'll just smile. Smile, written by the little tramp, Charlie Chaplin. And I hope that behind the mask today, wherever you are, that you find reason to smile. The sermon title this morning is A Plan for Surviving the Pandemic. Felicia and I were in downtown Seattle. We, we stayed at a hotel. We went to a happy hour at a crowded restaurant. We took the monorail to the Seattle Center. The rep theater was full. The performance of Shout, Sister Shout, was outstanding. We unexpectedly saw Whidbey neighbors during intermission and had a nice visit with them. And after the show, late at night, we enjoyed a stroll through the city streets back to our hotel. Stop! Wait! What, Pastor Jim? What did you do? It's okay. Take a breath. Don't get your pandemic undies in a bundle. I'm slow but I'm not stupid. The event that I described for you happened eight months ago in a world that now seems so very far away, a world that is not quite yet forgotten. In this strange new world, we wait, sometimes patiently, sometimes impatiently, for the former days to return. The World Health Organization this past week said that given our recent scientific advancements, this should all be over within two years. Thanks be to God. We ate out. 
sitting close to people at the table right next to us. We ate, and there were singers on the stage, and people were laughing out loud. And that was less than a year ago. In the months that have passed, our country has slowly become unrecognizable to us. We've lost a little bit every day. Do you know the story of the frog in the kettle? If you throw a frog into boiling water, it will jump right out. But if you put a frog in room temperature water and turn the heat on, it will just hang out there with the increasing heat until it's too late for that frog. The heat was slowly turned up on us. If it had happened all at once, we would have jumped ship and gone directly to 2021 or 2022. Six months have changed the world in ways that we could not in our wildest dreams have imagined. Worship moved exclusively online. Unemployment went from an all-time low to Great Depression-like numbers. Faces and smiles disappeared. Masks covered us. We lost physical touch. Hugs and handshakes disappeared from our society. Travel plans were canceled. Schools closed their doors. And teachers had to reinvent themselves. And parents... Parents were torn between their at-home children and the work they needed to do to feed those at-home children. And then there was Zoom. A year ago, no one knew what Zoom was. Now it's a part of our daily or weekly life. It was just eight months ago. Felicia and I walked the peaceful streets late at night, marveling at the fastest growing and most vibrant city in the country. Okay. Now businesses are boarded up. Neighborhoods are no longer safe. Inner city crime is on the rise. It's hard to distinguish between peaceful protesters and lawless looters. First responders are suspect Race relations are tense, black lives matter, blue lives matter, white privilege, and suddenly the streets of our nation's cities are invaded by federal officers and out-of-town anarchists. It was less than a year ago. Now let's not be Pollyannish about this. Certainly not everything was good and healthy a year ago, but it did not feel like we were living in the end times, did it? A year ago, the condos were going up in Seattle to provide housing for downtown workers, and now there seems to be a mass migration out of our nation's cities to places like Whidbey Island. The companies that did not close their doors have realized that much of their workforce can be just as productive at home, and people are not coming into the office. Things were not all good a year ago, but it did not seem like the end times. Now, before you jump to any conclusions, I want to assure you that these are not the end times. How will you know when the end times are here? Well, here are the signs that you should look for. There'll be no NCAA basketball. Uh, there'll be no Mariners games, no college football. People will be fighting in grocery stores over toilet paper. There'll be only one ferry running on the weekends. And you'll spend more money on Clorox than you will on gasoline. My sister sent me a text not too long ago asking me if I thought it was the end of the world. I said that it was not, but I would text her when it was. Let me know if you want me to text you. And in the last year, what has happened in politics is shameful, more than shameful. The lack of civility in our political leaders has infected the soul of our country. Public servants on both sides of the aisle seem to have forgotten that they were called to serve the public. Caring for the people on Main Street should not play second fiddle to party politics or winning elections. The lack of civility has infected the soul of our country, and this virus is more dangerous than COVID-19. 
It threatens our national identity. And this virus spreads night and day on social media and on cable TV as we imitate the immaturity of our political leaders. Now, between the lockdown and the modeling of our leaders, I worry about the children. I worry about the children who are journeying so young through this pandemic wilderness. Okay, take a breath. The cup is still half full, or at least it's one-third full. You see, I am optimistic by nature, and I'm optimistic still for our church and for this great nation. But we must call a thing what it is, and we must clearly understand that we are in a battle for the soul of our nation. The powers of good and evil are locked in an epic battle. The violent tug of war between light and darkness rages all around us. Now, this is nothing new, of course, but there seems to be a greater urgency now. We are called to be light and to bear witness to that light. Light and darkness, whose side are you on? Abraham Lincoln said, my concern is not whether God is on our side. My greatest concern is to be on God's side, for God is always right. Amen to that. But it's not always clear, is it? I mean, how do I know that I'm doing what God wants me to do? Okay, with that long-winded introduction, I would like to give you a pandemic plan for surviving and thriving in the United States of America in the year 2020. We need a plan because I've got to tell you, the next three months promise to be even more challenging than the past six months. Now, our plan comes from God's word. Cam read it for us a few moments ago. I am going to take the inspired and wise words of the Apostle Paul and use those words to create our pandemic plan for 2020. Now, as you might expect, God's plan starts with love. Of course it does. Doesn't every one of God's plans start with love? God is love. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. The greatest of these is love. Yes, it always starts with love. Now, love, a chosen way of interacting, not a feeling of passion or desire. Love is a way of living. It's a discipline. It's a daily choice. Point one of our pandemic plan for living is love. Paul writes, let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Love must be genuine. Here you see a photo of David Hartnett and Craig Reed and me. We are in Ephesus in Turkey. We were tempted to buy genuine fake watches. Luckily, our wives were there to protect us. Let love be genuine. That implies that there is a lot of fake love out there. The word love is tossed around a lot, but real love is hard to come by. And remember, love is an action, not a feeling. Let love be genuine. What does this mean? Paul says, hate what is evil and hold fast to what is good. You see, genuine love is discerning. If something is bad for you, stay away from it. If there are behaviors or habits that pose a threat to your family, then get help and get rid of them. If something is destroying our country, have no part of it. Conversely, hold fast to what is good. Tend to those things and activities and habits and rituals that are life-giving to you and to those that you love. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Affection, genuine affection, tender care, compassion, small acts of kindness. We can't get enough 
of genuine affection. Now, Paul reminds us that genuine affection should be mutual, and it starts with us, and it starts at home. Now, perhaps some of you out there worshiping today are kind of competitive by nature, but currently there are very few competitions going on, very few sporting events. So if you want an outlet for your competitiveness that will bear good fruit in your life, Paul says, outdo one another. Outdo one another in showing honor. Go for it. Make it a competition. Outdo one another. Now, Pastor Daniel Erlander and I worked together here at Trinity for nearly a decade, and we had an ongoing competition to see who could park furthest from the front door of the church. You see, Pastor Dan always claimed to be better at being humble than me. Think about that for just a moment. Point one of our pandemic plan for 2020 is love, genuine love marked by mutual affection and honor. Point two, persevere. For six months, we've been figuring out how to persevere. How can we persevere through this pandemic? Paul writes, rejoice in hope, be patient in suffering, and persevere in prayer. We must not lose hope. In fact, we are to rejoice in the hope that is ours. If we lose hope, then we lose the battle. So hold on to hope. This virus will not last forever. The Bible promises us that if we're weeping now, there will be days of dancing in our future. And if we're mourning now, then there will be days of rejoicing just around the corner. Hold on to hope. Be patient in suffering and persevere in prayer. Now, patience can be hard to come by these days, but fueled by hope and inspired by prayer with a deep faith in God, let us be patient. Be patient with ourselves. Be patient with those that we live with. Be patient with our neighbors who are suffering too. Be patient. Everyone is a little bit on edge right now. Most of us have never lived through a time like this, a time when everyone is suffering, a time of anxiety and fear and uncertainty that plagues our families and our children, the young and the old alike. Be patient with each other. Paul continues by saying, contribute to the needs of others, extend hospitality to strangers. You see, one of the best ways to get out of your own head and to quit focusing on your own problems, one of the best ways to gain perspective is to tend to the needs of others. Be generous. Be hospitable. It will help you to persevere. And the final point of our three-point pandemic plan for surviving 2020 is to live in harmony with one another. Listen to Paul's words. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. You see, my friends, an eye for an eye, it does not work. An eye for an eye will leave both parties blind. Do not trade insults with your neighbors. Do you have family or friends or neighbors who are going to vote differently than you do in the upcoming election? Let it go. There is no need for you to approve of their vote. It's not your job. Your job is to live in harmony, to show mutual affection and honor, to outdo one another in showing honor and affection. Stay away from conversations or Facebook posts that will lead to cursing. Keep the wood away from the fire and the fire will go out. No one has changed their mind or their opinion because of Facebook posts. Live in harmony. 
What does that look like? Paul wrote, rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. That's right. Share the human journey with others. Know that everyone is carrying a heavy load. Everyone is anxious. Everyone is on edge. And finally, if we are to live in harmony, Paul says, do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. None of us have a corner in the market of truth. None of us see clearly. None of us really understand all the complexities of the problems that are faced by others or our nation or our world. Do not be haughty. Do not think that you have to prove your intelligence by running people over with your opinions. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Love, genuine love, mutual affection, showing honor, rejoicing in hope, not losing hope, patience with yourself, patience with others, generosity, hospitality, and humility. That is God's pandemic plan for us. This is the vaccine for the virus that is currently infecting and threatening our country. Whose side are you on? Choose love. Live in harmony. When it's all been said and done, there's just one thing that matters. Did I do my best to live for truth? Amen. Carl is going to sing for us at this time. Carl? When it's all been said and done There is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? When it's all been said and done All my treasures will mean nothing Only what I've done for love's reward Will stand the test of time Lord, your mercy is so great That you look beyond our weakness And find purest gold in miry clay Making sinners into saints I will always sing your praise Here on earth and ever after For you've shown Heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done. You're my life when life is gone. When it's all been said and there is just one thing that matters Did I do my best to live for truth? Did I live my life for you? Lord, I live my life for you.
lift our hearts to God in prayer at this time. Each petition will lead us to a sung prayer response. Hear my cry, O God. Let us pray. God of life and breath, you are the source of hope. Listen, O God, as we pray to you. Hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer. Listen to my song. Singing praises all alone. I call on you again, for you have called me friend. You have called me friend, so I call on you. Once again, hear my cry, O God. Listen to my prayer, listen to my song, singing praises all along. With a weary heart, I feel so far apart, feel so far. God, for your precious gifts of love and life. Sustain us when we are feeling broken or frightened. Open our hearts and minds to hear your word and call. Inspire us to be your hands and voice in our world. Strengthen us to take action to seek justice for our neighbors. Grant us courage and creativity to joyfully share your good news. We pray for all who are feeling troubled and burdened, for those living in the wake of natural disasters. Grant them strength as they recover and rebuild. For all who are affected by the COVID-19 crisis, grant healing for those diagnosed and recovering. Protect and sustain medical workers and care providers. Bring comfort to all who are grieving the loss of a friend and family members. For all who are suffering in body, mind and spirit, wrap them in the power and peace of your healing embrace. Hear our cry, O oh God. Hear my cry, O oh God. Listen to my prayer. Listen to my song. Singing praises of The peace of the Lord be with you. The sharing of the peace moves now across the airwaves to each of you in your place this morning. We share the greeting of the peace at this time. Peace, peace be with you. Peace be with you.
Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Stay safe. Just a few announcements this morning. The beautiful flowers that grace our worship space were given by Laura, Cam, Carter, and Wilson Castle. Thank you for sharing with us. And Rally Day is only a couple weeks off now, two weeks off, and you are invited that day to worship at home as you are this morning, or you can join us here in the parking lot at church for a brief worship service, a car parade, and a simple brunch, mostly of which you'll bring yourself, Uh, You're going to have the opportunity to uh, show off your mask as well. We're going to send out very detailed instructions for Rally Day. It'll be coming to you soon. We're working hard to keep the law and to keep you safe as we gather together. And finally, thank you all for your ongoing and generous support. We very much appreciate it as we continue to be the church together. We're going to move now towards the table, towards the celebration, of Holy Communion, so you might take this opportunity at home to set aside uh, the common elements for sharing Holy Communion. We gather now at this table here in the sanctuary and around your home altars this morning, remembering that Christians across the country and across the world share this meal in a variety of different ways this day. And so as we gather, we remember an upper room in Jerusalem. It was a Thursday night in Holy Week. It was the night in which Jesus was betrayed by those who loved him the most. And on that night, our Lord Jesus took the bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, our Lord Jesus has promised to be present with us in our homes, in our sanctuaries, in our lives. Let us pray now as he taught us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. All are welcome. Please share now this holy meal together, the body of Christ given for you, the blood of Christ shed for you. Let our hearts not be hardened, To those living on the margins, there is room at the table for everyone. This is where it all begins. This is how we gather in. There is room at the table for everyone. Too long we have wandered burdened and undone but there is room at the table for everyone this is how it all begins let us sing the new world in there is room at the table for everyone there is a room for us all and no gift is too small there is a room at the table for everyone there If we share, come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. No matter who you are, no matter where you're from, well, there is room at the table for everyone. Here and now we can be 
the beloved community. There is room at the table for everyone. There is room for us all, and no gift is too small. There is room at the table for everyone. There's enough if we share. Come on, pull up a chair. There is room at the table for everyone. Let our hearts not be hardened to those living on the margins. There is room at the table for everyone. This is how we all begin. This is how we gather in. There is room at the table. There is room at the table. There is room at the table for everyone. Room at the table. Room at the table for Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you now and always in God's grace. Amen. Fed and forgiven, go forth to find your place of service. Be safe, stay home, travel with care. And as you go, may God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn now is Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ. Blessed to be a blessing. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. We'll see you next time.